welcome to the lecture series of mobile computing and wireless communication i am instructor ms alpa rupala so today we are going to learn about bluetooth so in today's lecture we are going to learn first of all what is the bluetooth then after bluetooth advantages then after bluetooth disadvantages and last one difference between infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode so if we talk about the first topic that is bluetooth so we all know that nowadays most of the people are using bluetooth and it is a very common term right but what actually the bluetooth is so first of all we know about the networks computer networks we know about lan man and wan okay same as we are having another kind of network that is pan personal area network if we are developing that personal area network in a wireless form then the one at uh, one particular topic is bluetooth okay so bluetooth is nothing but a wireless personal area network so we can see that the bluetooth can form ad hoc network now what is the ad hoc network as we have learned in ieee 802.11 that we are having two type of infra uh, two type of uh, modes in which we can develop the ieee 802.11 the architecture okay so two modes are infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode now in infrastructure mode we require one intermediator through which two devices can communicate to each other but in ad hoc mode we don't require any intermediator two devices can directly communicate with each other so the bluetooth is forming ad hoc type network so basically uh, we can transfer the data and voice by the bluetooth okay we can transfer data and voice both by the bluetooth by the bluetooth in a wireless form okay so if we talk about bluetooth the standard global standard so first of all it eliminates the wire because it is the wireless personal area network then it can transfer data and voice both and then after it is having ad hoc network in which two personal devices can communicate with each other without having any intermediator and last one is it works on ism band now what is ism i stands for industry s stands for science and m stands for medical so basically ism band is predefined free band this ism band is specifically given to the ism industries that is scientific research laboratories and medical science for free of cost purpose for r and d work so this band we are using that means your bluetooth is using that free band that's why we are having the lower cost in transfer or communication of data or even the cost of transfer is actually nil so if we discuss about how the bluetooth came up so the bluetooth came up after the research laboratory of ieee 802.11 have found some of the criteria to which something should be satisfactory and that satisfactory market sir criteria were first of all market potential now what is the market potential obviously we require one uh, if we talk about the ieee 802.11 that is wifi okay in which we can cover a whole bending area but suppose we don't want to establish any infrastructure and even though we want to communicate okay so there are a lot of a numerous number of people who wants to communicate in a very lower area okay so that is the first reason that is the market push potential then after the compatibility it should be compatible with the protocols of ieee 802 2.11 or ieee standards predefined standards then after the distinct identity it should have some distinct identity which is basically for develop for this reason only okay the market potential as we have discussed for satisfying that market potential we require distinct identity that we require something to be developed and then after the technical feasibility whatsoever we want to transfer it should be transferred in very effective manner 
and then after the economical feasibility that means while transferring your cost should be minimum or up to me so this all were the five criteria on which after the r&d work the ieee standard came up with the solution and that solution is nothing but what bluetooth so ultimately the bluetooth was developed in early 90s in which uh, basically uh, the hornet bluetooth the king of landmark on that name after of that king, king of denmark the bluetooth is named so if we talk about what kind of uh, services can be provided by the bluetooth so there are basically three kind of services the first service is connection of peripheral devices as you all can see that i am having one wireless mouse in my hand for operation of the ppt so this is what again this is based on a usb but we can have the bluetooth infrastructure like bluetooth device bluetooth uh, we can have the bluetooth uh, keyboard we can have the bluetooth mount or which is the usb kind of or which is the any kind of uh, wireless mode okay then after we can have the smart watches then we can have many different uh, handsets okay so this all are the example to which peripheral devices can be connected wirelessly next one is support for ad hoc networking now we all know that what is the ad hoc networking basically to so the ad hoc networking means two devices can directly communicate with each other without having any intermediator and which is served by the bluetooth then after the last one is bridging the bridging of the network obviously we know that if you want to transfer the data to your mobile phone to your laptop then it can be easily transferred by the bridging of network okay so this all are the services that can be provided by the bluetooth and even though we are uh, using the headset that handset by that handset even though you are picking up a phone and you are talking on a phone by that handset in a wireless mode due to the bluetooth data transfer of voice so now what is the advantages of bluetooth one by one we are seeing so first of all the ad hoc communication network which is very immediate and very quick to establish so it is very quick then after it uh, consumes low power it must because we are uh, because we are working on a mobile network so mobile network must have the devices which should be light weighted so that light should uh, weighted devices should draw minimum power so according to that the first requirement of your bluetooth is must be of lower consumption okay lower power consumption which is fulfilled now next one is it can pass through the walls so the communication we don't require to make a hole in the wall okay as we have discussed earlier then after it has better uh, performance or a range than the infrared rays okay it has better performance and range than the infrared rays and then after it is very cheap how it is cheap so basically uh, we just need to purchase one chip on which the bluetooth will be working okay so or that chip or that uh, any kind of usb which is based on a bluetooth protocol okay so even though your mobile phone is an uh, inbuilt in built having the bluetooth chip right so the cost of purchase is fine then after we don't need to expense uh, any kind of money for the data transfer so that's why we can say that it is very cheap next one it is easy to install just the installation is there we are just even though uh, if we talk about your mobile phone just we are clicking on a single button for activation and deactivation other fundamental parts will be done directly then after connection to the different devices very convenient we can just uh, just as we have just discussed okay so in it is free to use as we have discussed okay it can transfer voice and data both just if we uh, some to mobile phone is transferring movie okay or any music that is what kind of data transfer but someone is talking on a phone so at that time 
we can have one Bluetooth device by which we can uh, talk on a phone, right? So that Bluetooth device is transferring signal to your mobile phone and mobile phone is transferring signal to your antenna. So basically this one connected, okay? And your mobile phone and your Bluetooth device is transferring the voice signal. So basically we can say that Bluetooth can transfer voice and data both. Now next one is it is using FHSS which is frequency hopping spread spectrum. So due to use of the frequency hopping spread spectrum, we can say that Bluetooth is very secure. But the next one is if Bluetooth is having advantages, then it is having some of the disadvantages also. So what are the disadvantages? So first of all, the security is major disadvantage because we are developing the personal area network and we are not having that much of strong algorithms for the communication to be secure. Then after the interference, obviously if we are having the more number of little devices connected with each other, then the data transfer rate can be reduced. And then after the next disadvantage is bandwidth of the Bluetooth is lower compared to the Wi-Fi. So the data transfer rate could be minimized. Okay, it could be uh, lower. Now next one is battery uses. Obviously we just seen that uh, lower power consumption is there. But compared to the off of your off state, uh, status of your Bluetooth and all status of your Bluetooth then Bluetooth is using or occupying low, uh, greater power than off state condition. Then it can have only, it, it is working in only short range communication, okay, because this is what a wireless form of personal area network. network. So basically it, it is for short range communication. Then after the next is, it can connect to only two devices at one, but it is not exactly true because we can connect two or more devices, but of different, different type. That means we can connect to mobile phone, but we cannot connect another mobile phone with that single mobile phone. Okay, but we can connect Bluetooth handset with that mobile phone because the devices are different. Then after it can lose the connection in certain condition. So obviously everyone is having some of the disadvantages. Now the next topic is difference between infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode. So basically you can see that here is the difference between infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode. The first one is in infrastructure mode basically we are having the access point and in ad hoc mode we don't have any access point. So in infrastructure mode whatsoever your device is the device can communicate by the AP. Okay, but in ad hoc mode, basically, uh, the two devices are connecting or communicating to each other without having any intermediator. That is your access point. Okay, next is parameter is external communication. So, access point is there. So, external communication is done according to access point and in ad hoc mode, there is no any part of the access point. Okay, then physical infrastructure. Obviously, it is needed in infrastructure mode, but in ad hoc mode, we don't require any uh, physical infrastructure. Complexity, the infrastructure mode is having very lesser com uh, complexity for communication because every everything is centralized to the AP. Okay, but in ad hoc mode, we don't have any centralized coordinator. So, for communication, we require max CSMA, CA and CD algorithm, which is very complex. Now next is, uh, next parameter is where it can be used. So basically uh, it can't be used. So, so basically infrastructure mode, we require infrastructure. So we can't use that in a critical situation like disaster. But ad hoc mode is fully connected mode and we can use it everywhere. Applications of it, IEEE 802.11 and Hyperland 2 are the example of infrastructure mode. And Bluetooth is an example of ad hoc mode. Now next one is channel access. Infrastructure mode is basically using TDMA based protocol. Whereas the ad hoc mode is using MAC protocols. Next one is topology. So 
obviously we are having the ap for a centralized communication so the topology in infrastructure mode based on that but in ad hoc mode we don't require any topology to be created so today we have learned regarding what is bluetooth the advantages of it the disadvantages of it and the last one that difference between infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode thank you we will meet in our next lecture